What do you love most about magic? What do you was what? Hmm. What do you love most about magic? Uh, what do I love about the Yeah. I love the fact that you get to associate with your friends, make friends and entertain people. And you can have a clean, wholesome performance that's good for any audience. Magic in the future. Well, <laughs> from what I've seen, a few magicians doing, it worries me. Hmm. But uh, I hope there are enough old timers left in the business to save the profession. But remember this. People go to see a magic show and they don't expect to see a dancer come out on the stage. And that's what happens today. So they didn't pay to see you dance, remember. They paid to see you do magic. So remember that. Okay? Thank you. I did the first magic show for the Magic Castle in Hollywood. And uh, they didn't have any money, so I did it for them free. And since that, I have done a hundred more shows at the Magic Club in, in Hollywood. Just a few days ago, we had a, a sellout business and uh, a, a big crowd. And I wrote a song for them. Everything's up to date at the Magic Castle, and they're having a lot of fun with it. Is that answer? No. No, it doesn't answer. He wants to know why you left movies and went back into magic. Well, I, I've been making them up until just recently. The last film I did was the African film and it had, you know, the, the Kufa man. The, Kung Fu, Kung Fu man. What was his name? David Carradine. David Carradine, <laughs> yes. It was his last film. The news got out that he committed suicide. That was not true. The last film he made was a picture called Dark Venture, made in Africa. Thank you. Oh yes, I have, I have a son and a daughter, and my daughter has a horse farm in Kentucky near Bowling Green, and I live in Bowling Green now with my lovely wife Tammy, and. Uh, if you're ever coming through Bowling Green, Kentucky, we call our home the Magic Manor. And if you pick up the phone book, you'll see our name and address in the phone book. Give me a ring and you'll be invited to the Magic Castle. And we'll roll out the red carpet oh. for you. <laughs> All right. There's a question. Should, should all should all children learn magic? Is what? Do you think children should learn magic? Oh, I think it's great for them. <laughs> yes, it is. But remember this: keep your magic clean. Yeah. Vulgarity is not funny, or is it mystifying? Keep your magic clean. Let me see. Do you remember the lady that wrote a book? Has this ever happened to you? A lot of people wrote in to tell about things that have happened. One time, I was doing the drum illusion. Now, in the drum illusion, there is a, a cabinet on the stage and the girl climbs up through the top of the cabinet and goes up into a trap door in the drum. 
and the girl got in the drum and her legs were hanging out of the bottom and, and the stage hands pulled the rope with half of her hanging before the audience oh. and half of it in the drum. <laughs> so it was impossible. So I went to the microphone and told the audience that a man had just asked me, ah, isn't it difficult to go out before this audience? So I sweat out and told him, now you have seen the one illusion that I cannot hide. No, In Las Vegas, a few years ago, a gentleman came to me and, and he said, Mr. Calvert, people would like to know how you lived so long. And he persuaded me to write a book called How to Live to Be a Hundred. I've written a book, and, and it, people like it, and many of them are solved. We also have a book written by William Rauscher that has many times been called the greatest book ever written about a magician. I didn't say it was a book about the greatest magician. <laughs> I said it was a, a book written about how to be the world's greatest magician. And the people felt that it was the greatest book ever written on magicians. Do you have the, the book? Show them what the book looks like. Yeah, it is there. I'm sure they've all seen it. Yeah. You can pass it out there and let them pass it around. You take the off. It's all Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better go to the room. Who do? <laughs> no, any, no, any more questions? Any more questions? Now, if you would like to buy one of these books, <laughs> Tammy will talk to you about it. Walk out there, Tammy, and, okay, and let I them will. know that you, you have the book. Any, any more questions? Any more questions? John. Does somebody want to ask you a question? Okay, what's the question? John, hi, this is Devious. Um, I wanted to tell you, there's a lot of people in Las Vegas that couldn't be here today that have never met you. And, <laughs> and they wanted to ask you some of the tips because they know that ropes are a big part of your act. Can you tell us some of your tips on working with ropes? Yeah, they want to know about tips on working with ropes. With ropes. He's asking. Well, we have, a, we have a video on it, don't you? Yeah, we yes. do. Do you have it here? Yes. Okay, we have a video on magic with ropes. Yeah. But can you share with us some of your... Put it we, where they can see it. Okay. They're not going to take <laughs> they, it away they, they, they want you to give them some tips about ropes. Do what I ask you to do. Yeah, they are passing they're, they're passing the book around. Okay, they're passing yeah. it around. Mm -hmm. I think you're on your own. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> was there somebody that How you about have performed for that was exciting for you to perform to? Oh I performed for a number of different royal family uh, around the world. But the royal families are like anybody else. Do a good show and, and they appreciate it. Do a lousy show, you might as well stay at home. <laughs> oh, yeah, that did. William W. <laughs> Larson, the father of Bill and Milt Larson, wrote a book on Dr. Q's magic. Now, what he did, he watched magicians work. And when he saw a magician doing mind reading or, or hypnosis, and he wasn't doing anything, uh, wasn't punching any nerves, he got to figure that this has to be some sort of collaboration. So he gave it the name Dr. Q's 
magic because what he did, the magician gave whoever came up on the stage a, a quiet cue and they did what he said because he told them what to do. If somebody will come up, I'll give you an idea. Right. He's got the what? Right over here. What? What is your profession? Besides magic, anything? I work for a food cell flooring company. Well, let me give you that. Now, take my hand. Okay? Would you mind to hold that microphone over there? Now, I want you to open your hand and see if you can move it from mine. Come over here. Hang on. Take. Just a second. You got ahead of me here. <laughs> uh, you're a little soon. You open your hand. Now you have your hand. Now you keep that over there. Act like you can't take it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now let's see. Pull it. Can you get it out? No. <laughs> well, try to put the other hand in and help it. All right, now here. Hold it. Now really, really. All right, relax. <laughs> All right, now, see if you can raise your hand. Oh, get down and pull with the other hand. You can do it, you can do it. Come on, Carl. <laughs> there you are. Okay, fine. Let's give him a big hand. All right. Marine. He's a marine. Yeah. You sail a yacht, do you? <laughs> yeah. huh? yeah, Haven't I seen you before? Mm -hmm. Somewhere. No, he's in the U.S. Marine Corps. So you're with you're in the Marine Corps? Yes, sir. Have you ever come on board one of my yachts? Mm -hmm. no, the sir. Magic Castle? Which I had for many years. Years ago, and and uh, that, tell me, do you remember? Harlan Tarbell. Huh? That's right. Tammy's got it. Doctor Harlan Tarbell came to the college and he lost his little tote bag and I was able to lend him a lot of stuff to do his show. And one of the things he did was the scene with the fingertip where they taped his eyes with adhesive tape and people would bring articles up and lay them on the table and he would tell them what they were with his eyes blindfolded. Would you like to see that? Yes. I'll do it for you. Okay. You want to stand up? Yeah, I'll stand up. Now, I mean, uh, how about you, young man? Would you come up? Uh, I'd like shout. you to take my eye. Yeah. Well, you, you better take, get your glasses off. Look, too. Right there. You better my brush right there. Maybe cut it in pieces. Okay. Look at it. Okay. Let me cut it. Uh, I'll start them and, and you tape them down. 
can you too? It's a nice stretch. It's 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 a stretch type, so kind of easier. Oh. Okay. That's Tip it down good. Now would you like to cut it out of it and put it across it? Yeah. It's cohesive, it's not adhesive. Nice. About the same length. If we could trust him, he could just close his eyes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it won't stick. Ever copy or emulate any other magician to form your own personality on stage? Well, there are many different magic tricks, and, and you try to learn as many of them as you possibly can, and there's nothing wrong with that because there are books on magic all over the world. Is there been any other magician that you have looked up to and followed them. their style? Well, Thurston was my ideal magician. I also enjoyed the, the friendship of Harry Blackstone. Howard Thurston and Harry Blackstone. I saw Dante do one of the best magic shows I've ever seen. I also saw him do the worst one I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for that, I saw him sober and he did a great show. Mm -hmm. Then one night he came out on the stage and he was drinking and he did a terrible show, which you should expect. Right. So right. don't go out there drunk. Keep it sober. Do you and drink? Alcohol, not for lunch. <laughs> I never even drank a glass of beer. I know what it smells like. I know what it looks like. And that's enough for me. <laughs> uh, oh. Tammy in Singapore. We played in Singapore, and we played a circle of theaters out of Singapore that had a hundred theaters in 50 cities. Halfway through the circuit, I got a call from the office in Singapore. They said, Mr. Calvert, I thought you might like to know we owe you one million dollars. Now, but just a moment. Uh, it, it takes three Singapore dollars to make one U.S. dollar. So what they really owed me was a third of a million dollars. And that was a lot of money to make in six months. Wow. So you can make money in magic if you do it right. Do I have one here, Tammy? Do I have one of those sponges here? No, I know. No, I don't have. It. But you know, you can buy them. And Is it like a tennis ball? <laughs> like the ball? That's Some like of them look like a star. The stress ball. I always squeeze those before I perform. It loosens up your your muscles. I always. <laughs> I my hand before I perform with one of those sponges. Was there somebody that you have performed for that was exciting for you to perform to? Oh, I performed for a number of different royal families around the world. But the royal families are like anybody else. Do a good show. And, and they appreciate it. Do a lousy show, you might as well stay at home. <laughs>
Well, I just wrote a song, a song for the Magic Castle. And then the next time you go to the Magic Castle, you will hear it. Everything's up to date at the Magic Castle. They've gone about as far as they can go. And the song is quite a hit. And, and if you go to the Magic Castle, you will hear it. We'll ask her about it. <laughs> else? Give me a Now that is a bullet, right? Mm -hmm. Would you like to see a dragon bullet? A dragon bullet. <laughs> there you are, a dragon bullet. <laughs> <laughs> there you are.